time now for a look at your health and tonight we focus on something very timely mental health and the problem it's become in America signs that someone is sick and why so many recent mass shootings are carried out by young men in their 20s joining us now to try and sort some of this out is Dr. Mitchell Goldman from UCSD thank you for being here good to be here let's start with how prevalent mental illness is in this country well about 25 percent of all Americans at any one time will have some sort of a mental illness and almost 80 percent of Americans will have a, a bit of depression mm -hmm. so it's very common so then how does that stack up against our mental health system? What is there for those people? You know, there, there's a lot of good psychologists and psychiatrists that are out there, but unfortunately the ability to get help is actually becoming decreased. In the last three years alone, there have been cuts of $4.35 billion in mental health care. So insurance companies don't want to reimburse for mental health care and that's playing a toll on us. And the fact that when these um, children turn 18, then there's really nothing there for them. There is. Now with the Affordable Care Act, hopefully that's going to do a number of steps to increase mental health care for people in the 18 to 25 year range, but still we've got a big lacking in this company. And as we've seen through some of the blogs and writings and responses from parents of children who are mentally ill that may even be afraid of their children, there's a real stigma of, of trying to get them treatment. Of, why is that? You know, I don't know why there is. It, because parents should want to get help for their children. The problem is try, getting the proper insurance to get the right help. That's been the biggest problem. But we shouldn't think that if, if your son or daughter has autism or a mental health condition that they're going to be violent. That's not necessarily going to happen. It takes multiple factors to click that person on to violence. Yeah, and we don't seem to know what that trigger is. Let's talk about some of those particular signs that somebody may be suffering from some sort of mental illness. We have a list uh, to put up there for our viewers. You know, they tend to be really common sense. It's people that are loners, people that are feeling sad or down, confused thinking, you know, where they're excessive in their fears and worrying, mood changes, withdrawal, those are the key signs. And, and what's confusing as a parent is you say, ah, is it a moody teenager? Is it something more? Sometimes that's difficult to sort out. But I know there's no scientific links that you could find between uh, any of these like autism or Asperger's or anything and violence. What is the case in your professional opinion when it comes to video games? Because this continues to come up in the conversation and there seems to be a common sense link of, hey, this is the first generation that's really been raised on this kind of violence, but really has it made an impact? You know, Kathleen, I think you're spot on. You know, this is the generation. We see people in their 20s and 30s per, uh, having much more violent tendencies and causing these mass uh, shootings. Is it the video games? Is it being brought up with violence on TV and in the movies? I'm not sure. There are no studies that have proven this. But as you correctly say, it does make a lot of common sense. Now, one other thing that's unique to this country is the ability of anyone to have a gun. You know, there was just a, a mass almost killing where, where a person in China went in and tried to stab mm -hmm. 20 people. No one died because they had knives, they didn't have guns. So I think the availability of guns, the ability of almost anyone to get a gun, uh, especially an assault weapon, with all of these other signs and the teaching of how you can kill people with video games, the, it, you're right, it's, it seems like common sense but we really don't know the, all the answers at this point. No, but it has started a two-pronged conversation about gun control as well as mental illness in this country, and hopefully we can figure out something yeah. collectively. There'll be something that is really positive that comes out of this, and I think it'll sure be will. a combination of increased awareness of mental health issues and better gun control. All right, Dr. G, always great to Good see to you. Be here. And we can only hope that something positive does come out because a lot of these uh, people who are suffering, Lauren, from mental illness are pushed on the fringes of society and have no place to go. All right, thanks, Kathleen.